Hello again, composers and musicians, it's Zach Heidi, and today we're taking a look at Choir Essentials by Stretsoff Sampling. I did a VST demo for Stretsoff Sampling many years ago. It was for their Balkan ethnic pack, and it was really great to work with. Uh, so when they reached out to me and asked me if I'd try this, I said, absolutely 100%. And this Choir VST has jumped to like my top favorites immediately, and I'm really excited to chat about why. If you find this walkthrough helpful and interesting, do me a huge favor, leave a like, subscribe for more. It helps other VST companies find me and send me cool stuff. So before I actually talk about this VST, I'm just gonna give it a quick playthrough, run through a couple of the patches and we'll hear how it sounds. So you can hear these are pretty much right out of the box. I have a couple reverbs on there. Basically I have their stock reverb disabled, but it is a very nice reverb. I'll play that so you can hear it. Very realistic sound. I only disable it because I have this blended with my other choirs and I wanna make sure they're all a very uniform sound. Now the intention of this library is basically to be a starter pack for anybody looking to get into choral writing with VSTs. So if you look at the patch list, we have children's performance, we have choir ensemble performance, men and women performance, which are kind of just a bunch of different syllables. They kind of alternate through which you can enable and disable. I'll show that in a second. And then we have the legatos, which I use primarily. We have soprano, alto, tenor, bass, and then we have children's alto and children's sopranos. I actually didn't have any children's choir, so this was a great addition to my library. With every patch in here, we have three different mic settings. We have the close, the deca, and the hall. Um, I'm gonna choose the children's sopranos legato and solo those out so you can hear those. So here's close. Here's deca. That's my personal favorite one. I really like Deca mics. And then here's the hall. You could have those soloed out. You could have them outputted to different outputs. You could have them panned differently, or you could just have them all enabled and change the volumes. I have mine at the default settings because I honestly think they sound great as they are, um, but you could tweak those if you'd like to. Now there's lots of features in here. Um, we've got our basic stuff like uh, CC1 for dynamics, the mod wheel. I like to use a breath controller for choir because I think it's just very realistic sounding. And then CC11 for expression. So I'll demo those out so you can hear that. Now, the way I usually like to program instruments is to use modulation primarily and to use expression as just a very subtle color. So if I want something to sound forte for a while, I'll keep it near the top of the modulation and then ride the expression just a little bit just to give it some nuance within that forte. Now, two features that I think are really cool but I don't use are the sustain notes and niente. Niente is kind of like a softer entrance or exit if you wanna have that. So basically the mod actually will go all the way to zero now. So it kind of saves you that programming time if you'd like it. Sustain notes, as it explains, will just keep the notes sustained throughout. So you could play a chord and then change the modulation as you'd like.
I don't really have a use for that too much because I use a breath controller so I can keep two hands on the piano constantly. Another good feature is the Velocity Dynamic Influencer, which basically is gonna allow us to control how much we want the velocity to impact our dynamics, as you could imagine. So if I have this all the way turned off, no matter how hard or soft I play, it's always gonna be the same. If I turn this on dramatically, we get plus or minus 6 dB, uh, depending on how soft or hard we're actually playing the note. Kind of a nice perk if you want your actual playing to influence the performance a little bit. Now, focusing on the performance patches, you'll notice that we have uh, our syllables here, which we can play through. They'll kind of cycle. Now, if we really didn't like one syllable, let's say I didn't like uh, C, I could just click it, turn it off. and we'll have it disabled, which is kind of nice. We can also change our keyboard split. This is normal where it's just the full range of the keyboard. We could have things divided if we had uh, men and women, or if we wanted maybe two different sections of women with the same registers. And then we have octaves if we want to save ourselves time in programming and just have octaves. The performance patches are great. I could see myself using them primarily for shorts. So different short attacky stuff where I don't want to program syllables. I could do this very easily. But when it comes to sustain patches, I think the legatos are the way to go and they have some amazing features. Of course, we have our normal legatos, which is a great feature in itself. They sound very nice. What I like about this is they're very responsive choir patches. I can play quick lines pretty well. Which is great. Um, and at the same time, we still get a very pronounced legato, which I always like in my VST. So very excited about that. Uh, Stretsov looks like a lot of their product lines do this kind of thing. You know, we have a very nice fast VST with responsive legato. That makes this choir sit really perfectly in between my Insolidus choir, which I own by ATO, and my Nucleus choir. Uh, Nucleus is extremely responsive, but doesn't really have the legato, Nucleus light. Insolidus has a very lush legato, but is not very responsive. And these are perfectly sat right in the middle. Now there's one feature in this legato that just blew my mind when I discovered it. And that is that we can have polyphonic legato. This is something that I really believe is gonna be the future of VSTs. So when I saw that this could do it, I was just absolutely mind blown. I'm gonna play a little bit. You heard it already, but I'll play it and demonstrate. Now that's just amazing. I mean, first of all, it sounds great. There is no noticeable delay or latency added when I do polyphony. Um, and we can have these notes kind of stretch from one note and then split out to VC, which is just so wonderful. I think it's just so great that we get that legato effect. Usually the way I approach that was having one sustain patch and then one legato for the upper notes. But in this case, I can just have one patch do it all, which is phenomenal. And it's so cool. I'm just gonna demonstrate it one more time with the tenor so you can hear that. All in all, I'm really impressed with this library, especially at the price point. They're running it at 150 euros right now, which is about 180 US dollars. Uh, that may change, so you can check the description to make sure the price is updated, but it's great. It's really great. It's a phenomenal starter for anybody looking to just jump right in, not worry too much about programming, and just write some great music with some fantastic sounding VSTs. Two thumbs up from Zach. Thanks again to Stretsoft Sampling for giving this to me and letting me check it out. Really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this, do me a favor, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video.